Well, it's very interesting. I think if you're going to look to the future, you have to look to the past uh, as, your, as your starting point. One example that really strikes me is the interactive whiteboard, which was put, put out there as being this great innovation. Um, and countless schools and colleges and some universities invested massively, two and a half thousand pound a time, in these interactive whiteboards, which were supposed to revolutionise teaching, get students engaged and involved. And I've, I've seen them used probably 95% of the time as a glorified projector. You know, people don't use the interactivity. A couple of people do, but most people don't. And that's what they are. They're just an expensive projection system. So if we keep all of that in mind and we look to the future, we have to make informed choices about what's being presented to us and, and not invest massively, particularly in a lot of hardware, but also think carefully about the tools that we need and how we can improve them. Because your academic staff want something that's easy, they want something that they can do with very little additional effort. I always say to people, if you can type stuff in boxes and you can copy a web link, I've got the tools for you because that is the level of simplicity that people want. And that won't change. So if it gets more complicated, people won't use it. So it's about simplicity, I think. Martin is right. It's always important to remember that the end goal for using technology in classrooms, and of course the end goal for learning analytics as a field, is to improve the quality of the student experience. This is not about demonstrating the latest technology in the classroom. And as we look ahead, in a very rapidly changing world, to the sorts of technologies that are emerging all the time and will continue to emerge in the future, teachers must play a central role in shaping that future, keeping these end goals of improved student experience in mind at all times. So let's hear again what some of the teachers think about these issues. Uh, looking to the future for me, for my dream, I would, um, I would love to be able to do what General Electric engineers did when they designed a G90 engine to go on the treble seven, Boeing treble seven. They locked the guys in a room in a VR experience with a toolbox, gloves and goggles to work on an engine. They let them loose and they said, right, we want to find out how you do every task on the engine. So they gave them all the tools in a virtual environment, let them take it to bits. Anything they couldn't do, they found too difficult, they redesigned. So now when the engine's produced, all they ever need is a torque wrench, a set of spanners and a socket set and they can do any job on the engine. So for me, going forward in real time, I would love to expose my students to that um, and be able to get them to learn about engineering maintenance in a VR kind of environment. Real-time statistics, people finding out that they're actually um, getting it right uh, and that being fed to the tutor, you could still do things to make sure that actually they're on task, they're getting it done, they're understanding what they need to do. For me, I think with regards to digital technology, we can incorporate this into um, simulations, um, with our pre-registration nursing um, programs that we do, we have skills that we need to ensure that the students are um, uh, familiar with and that they're able to achieve their competencies with. I think with simulation we can incorporate digital technology into that to make it a little bit more cutting edge, a bit more innovative so that the students really get to kind of like feel what it would be like um, to perform those skills not necessarily on live patients, but within, within an environment that would, would offer them as close to that as possible.